And welcome to Between Life and Money with your host, Jeffrey Panic. Jeff, good to be with you again. I hope you're faring well in this hot summer here in America. <laughs> good, good. We're, we're thankful for the invention of air conditioning. So, Amen. Uh, <laughs> Exactly. exactly. Hey, I don't... Ours, ours went on the fritz the other day, man. And it was oh. just like, hi, ah, you're just sobering reality check. Exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, it's where you check into a hotel at that point. Oh, uh, no. You know, like the, the, the tech is outside and, you know, and you're looking at the temperature inside and it's 82 degrees in your house. Huh. And you're thinking, oh, man, come on, Ryan, get that bad baby fixed. <laughs> he did. He did. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You just never know, right? No, you don't. So what's on the table today? Yeah. So today we're going to talk about credit cards, as well as we're going to talk about just some tips on auto loans, uh, you know, really mm. another form of credit Yeah. and uh, really trying to, you know, obviously get the most, if you're going to do something, you want to understand the kind of the rules of the road uh, so you can get the most out of the transaction and not, you know, t be taken advantage of, which is unfortunately happening more than not these days. Yeah, it is true. And, you know, on credit cards, I got some dispiriting news in my email just the other day that credit card debt has risen back up to record levels. And that depressed me a little bit because during COVID, we, we, we seem to got as a country and people got obsessed with paying down credit cards. So I thought, oh, good, good. Look at this. That was short lived. It, it was, and you know, they say the our, our you know the American economy economy is the consumer led economy. It's mainly led by debt, mm. and you know, credit cards are the front and center. You know, the Fed did a uh, their Fed Fed study, or they they come out with different papers, and yep. they came out with the first quarter paper. And as you mentioned, the debt's up to one point one five trillion <sighs> on credit cards, moving higher. That's a uh, lot you know, of money. You mentioned <laughs> is an all time high. You know, and, and the reality of it is a lot of people are starting to get to the point of being tapped out of even being able to get the credit. So, yeah. you know, you have to ask yourself with the way the economy has been going, you know, at what point do we wake up and say, well, maybe we're going to have to re re uh, evaluate or reconsider what the expectations are moving forward. Yeah, but, you know, I, I, I will I will say this in defense of the American consumer. Credit cards are freaking Everywhere. Everywhere I get credit Everywhere. card offers and I've 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 gone on my you know the credit reporting things and said don't send me credit card offers. Yeah. But they it, yeah, they're even, everywhere. Even even if you opt out, you can't get them, you know, you can if you opt out, you get it out of your mailbox, but you can't get it out of your head because exactly. whether it's you know, you go to a sporting event, you watch a sporting event, you go to concerts, you watch t TV advertisements, they're everywhere. You know, yeah. uh, the large credit card companies just blanket everything. And so, you know, you can't get them really, they want it, they want to get in your head. And I think, unfortunately, they're doing a good job for a lot of people. And, you know, that same Fed study that talked about the, you know, the current uh, 1.15 trillion also found that the APR on the credit cards, what you pay is at an all time high as well at about 20, a little bit under 23%, wow. 22.75. And so, you know, you, you wonder why, the amount of debt has gone up by so much. And, and, you know, you can understand if you're paying 20, almost 23% on something uh, and you're paying the minimum payments, it's easy to get upside down, you know, where your, uh, you know, interest amount is in some cases double or triple what the original principal was over just a period of, you know, four or five years. Yeah. You've you, you know, you, you've talked about financial illiteracy, which, uh, you know, in, in past podcasts, and I mean, nowhere does it show up more than this. And I have known people who got underwater and had to, you know, undergo credit reviews and, and, and take classes because suddenly they woke up and their credit card debt was, you know, this freaking monster no longer under the bed, but sitting in the bedroom, as a matter of fact. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it takes the entire room up, actually. Yeah. So, you know, but there are, I mean, taking a step back, though, there are certain situations where the credit cards, if you use them the right way, you know, they can benefit you in terms of building credit or in some cases just reducing the credit uh, credit card cards that you already have in terms of the balances. Uh, and you know, that's really? the first thing we're going to talk about. Yeah. So, you know, if you've had some credit issues or you're, you're starting out trying to build credit, uh -huh. you know, one of the credit cards you could try to get is a secured credit card. 
And the reason why it's called a secured credit card is your outstanding balance, what you can spend on it, not your is what you put in. So in other words, if you deposit $500, yeah. that's your credit line. So once you get down below that, you have to add more money. So, you know, it's a benefit because you can't spend more than your means. You have to mm. deposit cash in there in order to have a line to pull money. And what ends up happening is the, you know, they should, and you need to check this as well. They report every month, the activity that shows it being paid off and being paid. And typically you can build credit or build your, rebuild your credit uh, uh, by having that, ex, you know, by having that history on your, on your credit report. Yeah. You know, I've heard of this card, uh, mainly, uh, like parents the, doing this with their kids, whether they were in high school or going out to college, they, they, you know, here's a credit card and it has, you know, it has $500, on it and you can't spend more than that. And it's, it, you know, parents thinking maybe this is a way to teach kids uh, yes. how to manage credit cards. No. And, 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 you know, really what you, you know, you have a lot of kids coming out, unfortunately with a lot of student loan debt out of college, you know, but they don't really have very much credit history after that. Or if they do, it's credit cards probably use the wrong way. So, yeah. you know, you, the earlier you can teach them, how to manage their credit as well as the credit card debt, uh, the more successful they'll be in terms of being able to get a first home purchase and do a lot of things that people used to take for granted. Uh, you know, so that's that that kind of lies in with the secured credit card, being able to build credit without having to get out of your kind of skis in terms of spending more than what you have because you're putting money in there and that's what you're spending. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the next one is a balance transfer card. You know, it's also called a consolidation credit card. It's oh, also yeah. a zero, zero APR card. And really what you want to do is if you have credit outstanding or credit card debt, and you feel that if you just start, you know, and you're paying 22, 23% on several cards, if you can consolidate those to a much lower rate, in some cases, they'll have an introductory rate of zero with a certain amount of time. What you're able to do is, you know, pay more because you're not paying all the interest and try to pay it down as much as possible and pay it off. You want to try to do that within the offer period. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if you have, you know, if you have more credit card debt from there, do the same thing again. The one thing you always want to be mindful is though, you want to cut the cards of what you're transferring because unfortunately what happens in some instances, people will open this up, transfer the credit card debt from the other cards and then run up the credit card debt on the money that they had transferred. So uh, meaning that, you know, they, they, they have, you know, twice as much as debt as they did before. Uh, so it completely uh, ruins the situation or the idea, but you use properly, you know, what you can do is get things under control, get it paid off and, and take advantage of the zero APR for at least a certain amount of time. Yeah, no, that, that's a good idea. Although, although you do have to be disciplined. And I like the idea of cutting up the old car. <laughs> Just get rid yeah, of it. I mean, you know, and there. really, really, anytime you do anything like that, I mean, or any of this, you want to make sure you have a budget. You want to make sure you know how much you're spending in interest, how much yeah. you're paying in principal, and how much of a surplus you have monthly that you can commit to paying down the cards on the zero uh, balance transfer card. Uh, that way you don't get yourself into trouble by not having the money available or think you're going to do something that you can't because you just don't have the money. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's, it's, it's really, you know, really have to be focused on getting the debt paid and you definitely don't want to get in a situation where you start adding other debt from money that you had transferred over, you know, that you were trying to eliminate in the first place. Uh, you know, the, the, the next is a transfer and reward card. Uh, you know, and everyone's kind of familiar with the travel cards yeah. and travel points, whether it's hotel, you know, air, whether you get cash back, you know, they're very popular. You know, what you want to do is make sure that you pay down whatever you spend on a monthly basis. Mm. And you want to make sure that the rewards points are, are you know, that, that are generated or, you know, you get, you don't want to, because in the end, if you're, if you're not paying down the amount being spent and you're paying interest, you know, whatever you're, whatever you're paying in interest is, you know, that, that is eating away or probably more than what you would have done if you would have just outright spent yeah. to buy the airplane ticket or, you know, hotel. So you just want to make sure 
you know, you're managing it like all these others in terms of your budget and making sure it fits with the rest of your overall uh, budgeting strategy. That makes that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. But when it comes to credit cards, I mean, you know that your bank obviously is always like, "Hey, Jeff. Hey, Bill. Well, here's, I got a credit offer here for you." But wh where is the best place when you want to start go looking for credit cards and thinking maybe there's a better deal available? I mean, how do you do that? Yeah. So the one thing you don't want to do is uh, you, you see people, you know, the aggressive people at the airport or at a mall kiosk. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen those guys. <laughs> you definitely don't want to get into that situation because you're blindly going into something without really even understanding what the background of it is, yeah. without really looking at what is the best thing for your specific situation. And so there's a few different websites. You know, one is nerdwallet.com, mm -hmm. nerdwallet.com, and the other is bankrate.com. They will allow you, there are two websites that allow you to find the right card for your spending needs. And what you can do is go in and put in what your spending habits are, put in kind of the amount that you're, you're, you spend monthly, and, and you can get in pretty good detail. And then what will come back and give you a few different options that fit best for what your spending history is. Oh. So, you know, you're making an informed decision to get what should work the best for you if you need a credit card or want a credit card. Yeah, you know, that's good. That's good, actually. So it'll actually sort of and point me in the right direction or listeners in the, in the right direction. Point you in the right direction, you know, and you always you always want to make sure, you know, if you're, you want to make sure you know what you're spending on the card uh, as it relates to what the fees are, you know, wh whether, you know, if, if, you, if you never travel and you, you're signing up for a travel rewards card, <laughs> it probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense, you know. And so you really want to make sure that if you do use a credit card, you take advantage of the credit, the credit card companies, because typically in most cases, they take advantage of everyone else. No, really? <laughs> the interest rates they're charging and just the fees in general. And, you know, again, it's a matter of responsibility, budgeting, and just kind of understanding the rules of the road and, you know, who, who is driving things as it relates to the credit card companies, you know, they're yeah. in business to make money, you know, and again, you want to make sure you try to utilize them uh, to, you know, get again, if you can leverage them to take advantage of different travel rewards, mm -hmm. cash back, and you're responsible, make the monthly, you know, make the payments. So you're paying it off monthly or, you know, using some of the other things we spoke about, they can make sense. But you just, again, want to make sure you're managing the card uh, and you're doing it in a responsible fashion. Well, you, you know, one of the reality checks on credit cards that I personally experienced was that I had paid my bill. It had, I assume, gotten there on time by the time, you know, the date on the statement saying it has to be paid by this date. But like two days later, I get this thing saying, hey, you haven't paid your bill. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I called them up and I said, I paid the bill and here's the deal. And they were like, oh, yeah, well, you know, it hasn't processed yet. And I'm like, excuse me, but, and, and I had a whole conversation so that people should be aware that it's like, just because it has a, a, a pay by date of whatever, the 15th, that means I learned they expect the, pro the, the, the payment to have been processed on that date, not necessarily received on that date. So, you know, the, uh, I guess it falls under terms and conditions, but <laughs> Yeah, and, and I mean, I, I get in, I get into the the fact that you know, in a lot of instances, you want to be able to link it to your bank so that you can make a payment online. Yeah, make a payment, uh, and you know that really where you can have a record of it. You know, it doesn't. You know, if anyone doesn't understand the speed of the you, you know the postal service at this point and the challenges, uh, you know, you don't want to rely on them to get a payment somewhere within a this specific yeah. cutoff date you know, where you could start end, end, ending up accruing late fees and everything. No. And so that's that, you know, and, and really, you know, you want to just make sure that you, you, you know, you get the money to them at, at the time that's required so that, again, you're not being charged any late fees. And at the same time, kind of getting into conversation about just monitoring the credit cards and any outstanding accounts that you have where you spend, you know, you go into stores or you do things online. You, you definitely want to look at those on a weekly basis. You want to make sure that there's no charges. You're not, you know, you know, 
you say, what is this? You know, that's a concern. You know, the sooner you address that with a company, the sooner that that could get credited back. Sure. You know, the other thing that it's good for is, you know, you want to look at your accounts and say, well, you know, the Wall Street Journal went from $8 a month up to $39 a month, you know, because I'm out of the initial trial. You know, yeah. Maybe it's a good time to go back to them and say, you know, I need to, I need to either cancel this or I need to get another trial period. It's interesting you bring that up because I've I've called publications that I've been subscribers to for a long time, and um, I've been like, I hey, look, I I need to I need to cancel the subscription. And they go like, Why do you need to do that? I say, Well, you know, it's just gotten too expensive, and they're like, We're hearing that a lot. And I'm like, I'm not surprised. But Jeff, nobody said, How about we give you an you know <laughs> an introductory? How about we yes. lower this down like. I was like, okay, got to go. I'm sorry. It's got to, we, it's time for us to break up. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, you know, they say breaking up's hard to do, especially if you're with, you know, where they'll come back to you for multiple yeah. offers and everything else, yeah. you know, and, and really it gets back into monitoring, uh, even with the cards, you want to make sure, you know, they, they can send out things occasionally, the terms and conditions, yes. and they will change those occasionally. You want to make sure you don't get blindsided by, you know, whether it's a monthly fee they start charging, you know, whether they charge, you know, APR, you always want to make sure you know what the top end of the interest is. Uh, and you don't want to get blindsided by the fact where you see, you know, your rate go from seven or eight percent up to 22. And mm -hmm. so you kind of want to really always know what the rules of the road are before you go down the road. And that's more important, I think, than anything than with the credit card companies. Yeah, no, no, that's a, that's a fair, very fair point. You know, you mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, you were going to talk about auto loans because uh, yeah. those are painful ones yeah. too, or they can't be at least. They, they are, they are, you know, with the interest rates moving up, at least for right now, the way they have, you know, the rates you can get a kind of sticker shock as well as just what the supply demand of vehicles are, new vehicles, and just mm. what the costs are, you know, it's, Inflation, you know, if, if three or four years ago, if I said, you know, inflation, you know, people that have, you know, had, had kids in college that had health issues, they understand what inflation is. Yes. Uh, but, you know, outside of those two groups, you know, it was kind of hard to kind of really put to pieces together. But, you know, if you look now at what, you know, the cost of a vehicle, even the maintenance, <laughs> as well as insurance, you know, and that's. That's one of the primary tips we're going to go over in a minute, just about putting the cost together, because, you know, wh the way it's laid out often is, you know, you have a car payment, you have to factor maintenance, and then you also have to factor insurance mm -hmm. to get come up with the total cost. And, you know, really yeah. you want to look at that. You know, but really, the first thing you want to do when you start looking, if you're going to buy a car or take out a loan, what you want to do is look at your credit score. And really what you want to do is you understand what your credit score is. You know, if it's not perfect or, you know, where it needs to be, you need to understand what you need to do to get it higher so that you can get a lower rate when yeah. you go to buy the car, because every little bit helps. And so if you can improve your credit score over a little bit of time, you know, it allows you really to imp improve the terms of the loan, uh, which can yeah. go a long way to saving yeah. on a monthly basis. I know. I want to, I'm just going to take a little sidebar conversation here on this because I don't think people understand the extent to which their credit score affects the rate that they get on loans. Because the lower your credit rating, perversely, the higher the loan, meaning the higher yes. the amount of money you're going to have to pay. And people should understand that to your point about check your credit score and see if there aren't things you can do to improve it. And, and it's not even just that, even, even your car insurance, you know, they look a lot, oftentimes at your credit. Mm. And, and if you, all the other area would be a job, you know, if you're applying for a job, a lot of times they'll pull your credit, you know, so it's very important to keep your credit in check. And the way to do that is really, you want to set a budget. You want to understand, you know, where, what you're spending money on, you know, your income expenses, and then you want to make sure there's no overlap things you're you know paying once more than once for like subscriptions on things and you want to try to get those down and you want to be able to put the money you know to pay down debt add to savings or an emergency fund you know and the other thing you want to do is you want to set a budget for your vehicle that you're getting you know you want to look at you know what is your monthly payment going to be you also want to look at you know what is the maintenance going to be and then you want to say well oh by the way you know car insurance in some cases is up 30% year over year I need to look at that as well. 
and you want to look at the total cost and make sure that that still fits into your budget. Yeah, you know, you know, can I throw another caveat in here? One of the things I learned when, when my kids were younger and, you know, we were going and looking at cars, the type of car and the driver, i.e. if you have somebody under a young man under the age of 25 yes. and, you, and, and they're like looking at a, like a quote unquote sports car and they think this looks pretty cool, even a used one. Wow. Yes. The insurance rates will blow your mind if you're not familiar. So uh, yeah, you can't understand, yeah. you cannot underscore that enough. Sticker, sticker shock, you know, not just that the sticker car, you know, the sticker on the car, but on what is around it. And that's, yes. you know, you really want to factor that in because that gets into, you know, you don't have the money that you had before because you're spending more on the car. So then you're putting more on say credit cards or adding, you know, you're spending through your savings, which creates all kinds of other issues. And, you know, getting to the savings side, you know, typically you're not just be able to go into a dealership and just say, I want, you know, unless you have something to trade in, you know, as collateral, you know, you're not just going to be able to go take a car out without putting down a down payment. Yeah. And, you know, optimally speaking, you really want to try to get 20% down, you know, the larger the down payment, the lower the interest rate is going to be. And obviously the lower the monthly amount is going to be uh, because, you know, you're going to owe less. Yeah. Uh, and typically that's going to have a better interest rate. So, you know, you want to try to aim for that. You want to understand what you want to buy and make sure it fits within your, you know, what your budget is. Uh, and then, you know, you want to make sure you shop for financing, you know, well before you start looking at the car going into the dealership. You know, you never want to just take the dealer finance. You yeah. want to make sure before you go in the dealer, you're pre-approved. You know, a lot of times you can go into a credit, your credit union, if you have a credit union or go into a bank, they can pull your credit history give you a rate, you know, that potentially could be competitive or better yeah. than what the dealer is so that you know what you're working with. And, you know, and sometimes you also want to understand how long you're going to pay it for, you know, it might be a low payment, but you may be paying it for six or seven years, you know, so you want to get the time frame, the amount of years you're paying as low as possible, because that'll mean that you're paying less interest over time. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't want to have a balance left over when you decide you need a new car. <laughs> no, no that, that, is, that is for sure. You know, and, and the other, and that gets into understanding the loan, ter loan terms. You know, you want to really understand what the loan terms are. You know, you want to make sure you understand you know, what, how much interest you're going to be paying over the term. And yeah. you want to see what happens. Well, what happens if I go from, you know, six years down to three years? Your payment may jump a bit but you're going to save a whole lot in interest that could be used for other things. Yeah. The other thing I've learned, uh, and I, I'd love to get your feedback on this. It, it seems that timing is really crucial. You know, a lot of people think, yeah. Oh, timing as in when the model year is about to go, which yes, yeah, certainly is an obvious one and true because dealers really want to move that inventory, but there are other factors as well. Right. Yeah, there are. I mean, if, you know, if they're going into new year vehicles, I mean, there certainly is a lot of uh, pressure for them to get rid of the old vehicles yep. for the previous year vehicles. But you can also look at, you know, what, whether it's a holiday or time of year, end of month is usually a good example. Oh. Uh, you know, and you can even look sometimes at the inventory online. You know, if you're looking for a specific vehicle and one of the dealers has, you know, 20 of them, you know, of the same vehicle, yeah. you know, you're going to have a fair amount of leverage saying, you know, you're probably not going to sell the 20, you know, there's a reason why you have 20 cars stacked up. <laughs> you know, if you want to get rid of one, you know, maybe you could give me a little bit of a deal on it. Yeah. And so, you know, the more, you know, as it relates to cars and most things in life, the more ability you have to negotiate and the more leverage you have. Yeah, I would be willing to bet a lot of this stuff covering credit card debt and and and, and auto loans and things are in your book for people who are fascinated by this conversation and thinking maybe they want to learn a little more. Remind people about your book. Yeah, so I, I wrote a book, came out, it's called Your Future Is Now. And really what it's designed to do is provide a blueprint for someone either starting out or someone that just wants to get a little bit more educated on a lot of these topics, you know, on consumer finance, we'll call it, you know, what you should be taught in high school, but you're not, yeah. you know, really, whether it's, how, you know, how in the world, the credit score, you know, there's these numbers, you know, you know, 800, 700, 600, like, where does that even come from? Or, you know, as you mentioned with the auto loan, like what is the process to make sure you're not being taken advantage of when you're getting a loan? 
Yeah. Uh, and, and there's various other topics in there, even, you know, what is the best time to get it? You know, your health insurance, if you're, you know, you, if you're on your parents' plan, you can only stay on it till 26, you know, it doesn't make sense when you get your first job, does it make sense to wait, you know? So there's all kinds of things that are out there, you know, and it's, it's like most things in life, the more, you know, and the more informed decision you can make, uh, you know, the more successful you'll be in paying less interest and, and just making better decisions. So where, where can they get the book, Jeff? Yeah, so they, they can get the book on Amazon. Uh, they can get it on Barnes and Noble, pretty much anywhere books are sold. Okay, uh, great. And, and, and really it's, you know, there's QR codes in there that you can scan that have calculators. And there's all, you know, I mentioned Nerd Wallet, bank rate. With most things I've put in uh, different websites that are independent sites where I list three or four different ones that you can go to to get additional information. And, you know, the benefit I've always said with the internet is that you can get information at a touch of a button. You know, really the problem is with that, it's a matter of going through, you know, the 330 million hits you might get off of Google <laughs> to come up with something that's, you know, really works for your specific situation. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, that's really the puzzle of things. You know, it's really, how does it fit for you? And that's could be very different from your coworker or another family member. Yeah. For anybody who's listening to this conversation and thinking, oh, the book sounds interesting, but I think I'd like to talk to this guy. How, how do uh, listeners reach out and get in touch with you, Jeff? Sure. I, my information's in the meeting notes. Uh, you can also always reach out to me via phone or email mm -hmm. uh, to set up an initial phone call conversation where we can talk about your situation and see if you know I can help in any way. Sometimes it's a matter of just pointing someone in the right direction. You know, they may have questions about all these different things because nothing, unfortunately, is very clear these days. It's I, I kind of say, like with most of us these days, we're just kind of walking around between, you know, a media news, Internet fog. You know, you're just in a <laughs> fog or a haze. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's it's just like you're walking around trying to figure out what are you even going to do? And you have all these voices in your head from all these different uh, areas coming in. But it really, you know what I try to do is just try to give impartial independent advice uh, to try to help at least point the person in the right direction. Fair enough. Fair enough. The other thing that listeners can do, if you're not a subscriber to the podcast already, is just hit the follow button. Then you're subscribed. And then every time Jeff drops a new episode of this podcast, you can give it a listen. I would ask that if you find this podcast interesting and you find it useful that you tell people about it, please, please, Tell people about it. Word of mouth promotion, we, we like that. We would welcome that, as a matter of fact. Thank you for taking the time to listen today. I'm Bill Tucker on behalf of Jeff and everybody at Balanced Wealth Partners. We want to thank you for your time and remind you that you can go out today and make today a great day or, or not. It's a choice. Thanks for listening. Until next time.